Thank you all for joining. We'll be starting at 3.35. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. We're just giving attendees a few minutes to jump on. We'll be starting at 3.35. Hi, thank you all for joining and welcome to Navigating LA County and Metro Contracting Opportunities with Supervisor and Metro Board Member Holly Mitchell. Q&A, please send your questions via the Q&A function. Michelle Curante, a Senior Account Manager, will be available to answer in real time. As host, of this meeting, Meriwether and Williams Insurance Services reserves the right to remove anyone participating or engaging in behavior that is either inappropriate or a distraction to the proceedings. Persons involved in such behavior will be immediately removed from this meeting and not allowed to rejoin. On the panel, we have representatives from the Contractor Development and Bonding Program, Los Angeles County Public Works, Los Angeles County Consumer and Business Affairs and Metro's Diversity and Economic Opportunity Department. As you can see, 
We have a lot of great and important information for you, which will be provided in a thank you email after the workshop. And now, please help me in welcoming Ingrid Merriweather, President and CEO of Merriweather & Williams Insurance Services, to introduce Supervisor and Metro Board Member Holly J. Mitchell. Great, thank you, Mildred. And thank you for um, participating today. We see we've got a, a, a good number of folks that decided to make this uh, important and make this part of their schedule today. So we appreciate that. We hope that you'll feel uh, that it was worth your time. That's our intention. Um, and you know, we always are looking for more feedback if there is uh, content that you think we could be adding that would be helpful or uh, any contribution to uh, that you feel like you can make to this forum, this is for you. This purpose of the program and the purpose of our outreach and our workshops is to make um, the information that we're sharing as impactful and helpful to you as possible. So again, thank you. Um, my name is Ingrid Merriweather. I'm the president and CEO of Merriweather and Williams. We are the program administrators of the Contractor Development and Bonding Assistance Program. Um, and really just to give you just kind of an intro so you have some context to all this, this is a program that is jointly sponsored by the City of Los Angeles, LA Metro, and LA County. And uh, kind of unique to have three major public agencies join hands to uh, support one program, but this is something that makes a lot of sense because they all share a common objective of having more inclusion of small and diverse contractors participating on their public works or public construction projects. Um, you all represent the contractor community in the LA region, um, and so this is really meant to be a program that you can enroll in receive uh, technical assistance and financial resource support that you're gonna hear more about shortly that is uh, really designed to help you pursue opportunities with either of those agencies. So we wanna uh, thank our sponsors because clearly without them, uh, this resource would not be there. Um, and you know we think that this is important given the enormous amount of opportunities that exists between these three agencies in terms of contracting um, that are coming online in terms of you know, the infrastructure project and new construction dollars that will be flowing through the LA region. Um, and it aligns with each of our sponsors in terms of their various diversity, equity, and inclusion goals. So in this instance, we're talking about contracting equity. Um, and so that, just to give you some context, I'll move to talk a little bit about um, the supervisor who is hosting uh, today's particular workshop. I have the pleasure of introducing a video from Honorable Holly Mitchell. She is the chair of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, and she's also a member of the Metro Board of Directors. Supervisor Mitchell is honored to represent the 2 million residents of Los Angeles County's second district. Since being elected to the Board of Supervisors on November 3rd, 2020, Supervisor Mitchell has made poverty alleviation and a, a countywide priority and has anchored an equitable recovery plan from the health and economic pandemic caused by COVID-19. This program, the Contractor Development and Bonding Program, represents an equitable and merit-based pathway for small and diverse contractors to compete um, in the marketplace. As a member of the County Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Mitchell also serves on the board of the Los Angeles County Children and Families First. You guys might know that as First 5 LA. Um, Metro that I mentioned, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum Commission, the LA Care Health Plan, and the Los Angeles County Sanitation District. I don't know how she has time to eat and do basic things because that's quite a, a list on her plate. Supervisor Mitchell obviously covers a lot of ground. So while she can't be here in person today, she has provided a warm video welcome um, and we appreciate her leadership um, in sponsoring today's event. and the support of the program. So with that, please uh, take a listen to Supervisor Mitchell. Good afternoon, I'm Supervisor Holly Mitchell. As chair of the Board of Supervisors, 
And as a director for Metro, I'm thrilled to welcome you to today's Regional Contractor Development and Bonding Program Workshop. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> Here in LA, we're part of a thriving economy with a booming construction sector. The county and Metro are investing heavily in public construction opportunities throughout our region. As you'll recall, voters approved Measure M in 2016, starting the most ambitious infrastructure expansion program in the country. Measure M is expected to generate $120 billion to complete dozens of major infrastructure projects over the next 40 years. At the same time, the county has dedicated over $50 million in capital investments through the use of our American Rescue Plan Act dollars. The county is also poised to receive billions of dollars of investments through the bipartisan infrastructure law as well as state investments. Finally, you know LA is hosting the 2028 Olympics, which means we will be focused on developing critical projects in the near term. Despite these historic opportunities, there are still barriers that prevent small and diverse businesses, particularly in our hardly reached communities from participating. When I say hardly reached, I mean communities that we as government sometimes really haven't done um, a great job in reaching out to. And typically we call them hard to reach, but the reality is we've hardly reached out to you. That's why I use that term, hardly reached communities. To reduce these obstacles and increase equity in contracting across the region, the County of LA and Metro implemented the Regional Contractor Development and Bonding Program, and you're gonna hear all about that today. The Regional Contractor Development and Bonding Program helps you take advantage of technical assistance and capacity building so that our small and diverse contractors benefit from these in historic infrastructure investment opportunities. So you will hear shortly about the program services, benefits, and opportunities, and I really hope you take full advantage. As you know, working with public agencies can really be a challenge. We're not called a bureaucracy for no reason. But this program is here to help contractors just like you break through those barriers. The Meriwether and Williams team is the administrator for this program and will guide you through its array of services. We hope today's workshop will help you maximize your potential in contracting with the county. We're rooting for you to thrive and succeed in the great county and the great economy of Los Angeles. Thank you for your participation. Thank you again to, thank you again to uh, the supervisor for the welcome, for taking the time uh, to record this. You heard me give a little bit about her bio, so you can see um, she's got a really full plate, a lot of areas that she's leading, so just taking the time to welcome you and to talk about the county's commitment to contracting equity um, is really appreciated. And, and again, just setting context for this, um, that's really what the contractor development and bonding program is here for. It's to try and create a more level playing field by addressing a lot of the systemic and institutional barriers, and I'll use the supervisor's words herself, the bureaucracy of trying to do business with public agencies. It's not unique to LA County. Um, and really this program is designed to uh, create avenues and pathways um, not just to help you secure contracts, but you'll hear momentarily as I talk about the program, I'm here to help you successfully complete contracts so that you can grow, that you can build capacity, so that you can bid on more opportunities and larger opportunities. So with that, I'm going to start really the first half of a overview of the Regional Contractor Development and Bonding Program. Uh, when I get through my portion, I'm going to be introducing uh, one of our sponsor representatives from uh, LA Metro, and then we'll give you the other half of the contractor development and bonding program by one of my colleagues, Robert Lowry. So with that, if you guys can advance the slide for me. Um, so just a little bit of background about our firm. We are by licensed a property and casualty insurance brokerage firm 
you might kind of ask, how is that applicable to providing technical assistance to contractors? But um, bonding, which those of you who are contractors are probably very familiar with and how instrumental it can be in terms of your ability to access, to be able to bid on um, public construction contract opportunities. It's oftentimes a requirement of, of prime contractors and bonding comes out of the insurance um, the insurance arena. So that's the connection uh, to our firm because we're licensed insurance brokerage and risk management consulting firm. Um, we have had been involved in public construction since the beginning of the firm 25 years ago. So we're very familiar with public construction. Um, we run specialty programs for public agencies. You're going to hear more today about the bonding and technical assistance work that we do. We're headquartered in San Francisco, but we are also downtown Los Angeles and have an office in Oakland. And as is should be obvious by this picture and by seeing me, uh, we too are a small um, and in our case, woman and minority owned firm. So there's a, a sense of affinity in the work that we do because we're working with our own affinity group. We're working with, with peers. We ourselves, you know, sometimes encounter similar obstacles that you encounter. And so we kind of like to be a safe place um, for you to come and get technical support and assistance uh, without judgment and from folks who can appreciate where you're coming from and how these kind of challenges impact your ability to grow. Next slide. So this is what we call the four pillars of the program. It's really just a way of uh, trying to demonstrate what are the core components of service um, that you're entitled to once you enroll in the program. I wanna say out the gate, this is at no cost to you. This program is fully funded by the three sponsoring entities. Um, and you know because they're trying to achieve these diversity, equity and inclusion objectives by the various ways that they describe that around contracting equity, um, that was core to providing a resource like this is, is for them to bear that cost. And there's advantages to the agencies as well by having more contractors um, in a position to compete for their work because more competition ultimately reduces cost of contracting, which benefits the agency and benefits us as the public because of course the agency is working with taxpayer funds. Um, so the first tower you see to the left uh, talks about assessment and technical assistance. So what's important for you to understand is that, you know, this is not kind of an assembly line that we put you through. The process starts when you enroll in the program with an assessment. That's where we're going to spend time with you. You're going to be assigned to an account manager, a contractor account manager. So you're going to have a designated representative in the program who works closely with you. They have a small portfolio of contractors that they maintain who's going to work closely with you. And they're going to start with this assessment process. And this is done with you where we have a back and forth exchange to just get the kind of information that helps us discern really where you are in the life cycle of your business and where are there opportunities that we can help you better position yourself um, to be able to bid, to secure bonding, to secure contract financing, to pre-qualify with the prime contractor or other areas of technical support that could benefit you. Once you complete the assessment process, we work with you to develop a work plan. And that kind of becomes the guiding document that we work together with you where we've identified all the areas of opportunity that we can help position you. And that becomes a the engagement of us, if you will, where we're working with you on an ongoing basis in all the areas we identified. Then if you look at the next pillar, it says bonding and contract financing assistance. So I know that there's a kind of a mix of, of types of businesses that are participating today. Not all of you are construction contractors. So bonding is generally specific to construction contractors. But we also see it pop up in other areas, such as security guard services or IT services. So essentially, a bond is a form of a guarantee by a third party, a bonding company, that if a contract is awarded to you, 
that it guarantees successful completion of that contract. Um, bonds are required by public agency for certain types of work, clearly public construction, but as I said, it's gotten extended now into other areas. Um, and it's necessary to protect public funds. Um, so public agencies have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure if they hire a contractor to build a, a structure for the agency that that structure gets built within the terms and confines of the contract. And if something happens that causes the contractor not to be able to uh, complete the project, then the agency has recourse. And that's essentially what a bond is. It's recourse in the event of a default of a contracted entity who for some reason does not complete their contract. Um, qualifying for bonding can be challenging because bonding is seen as a form of credit. Um, so it very much mirrors the same kind of underwriting requirements that would be required of you if you were applying for a line of credit. Matter of fact, it's got more requirements because not only is it looking at your financial capacity and wherewithal, um, if you're a contractor, it's looking at your history, it's looking at your work in progress, it's looking at um, what projects you've worked on before, it's looking at whether or not you've ever done bonded work before. So, you know, it should be inherent where you can understand that when we're talking about small and diverse contractors, qualifying for bonding, um, like in financing, can be more challenging. But the program is there to provide you with bonding assistance, and that's going to include our ability of putting up collateral with a bonding company to help you qualify for a bond that you might not otherwise qualify for. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Contract financing. So the other reality in doing business with public agencies is the payment cycle. And I know I probably can't see you all, but I bet I see a lot of heads nodding. Um, about how challenging that can be. So in public contracting, and let's stick with public construction, um, it requires that you perform the work that you must prosecute on the contract and cover those expenses yourself out of your own resources. So if you're a contractor and you've been awarded a contract, that first payroll is going to be on you. That first purchase of material and supplies, that's going to be out on you. You're going to have to essentially front those expenses. And then you submit a progress payment, which is usually every 30 days. So your first progress payment is going to be 30 days after you've performed work and incurred expenses. And then the process is going to require the public agency or the prime to review your invoice, to vet it, to verify it, and that process generally takes another 30 days, sometimes longer. So these agencies recognize the barrel that they're putting contractors under, especially small contractors, when you're awarded a contract and you're expected to fund this out of your own resources. And they also recognize that as a small firm, you don't have the same access to a line of credit, for example, with the local Wells Fargo or Bank of America branch. Um, and so contract financing for contracts that you've been awarded with the sponsor agencies, again, that's City of LA, LA County, and LA Metro, the program provides for funding for you to help fund those contracts, that cash flow gap, if you will, between the time when you have to spend your own dollars and you get repayment um, by the agency. So I'll talk more about that shortly too. And then as a participant in the program, you'll participate in a range of education and training. We do um, multi-week academies. We have monthly workshops, um, excuse me. And uh, that's important for you to have access to expert uh, presenters and folks very knowledgeable around uh, bidding and estimating, contract and project management, prevailing wage, project labor agreements, um, all relevant areas that you're going to encounter in trying to do business as a contractor with these public agencies. So many of you have probably seen things come through from us around uh, training. Contract support. So as I said earlier, um, this the goal of this program is not to just help you secure a contract. It's to help you successfully complete a contract. 
Um, and when I say that, the goal is for you to complete the contract, for example, making a profit, um, for you to um, address the kind of ebbs and flows that can happen um, on construction projects. We know that they're not these kind of stagnant um, things, that there are just a range of variables that you encounter um, as you're trying to complete your work and some things that are outside of your control. So the, the goal of the program and the staffing resources we provided, some of whom you're gonna hear from earlier, have many years of project management experience that they bring to bear. And we really act as your advocate once you're on a project with the agency to help make sure you successfully complete that contract and provide you support. Um, and then the last pillar you see is, is the prime contractor partnership. So we understand for many of you, your opportunities may more likely be that as a subcontractor. And so all of the major primes, the Skanskas, the PCLs, the Swinnertons, the Turners, the Tudors, um, they all are part of our prime partnership. Um, so you'll see us convene events with them. Those firms will come to us to look for contractors who are participants in the program when they're looking for a particular sub for a particular project. Um, and so really uh, your participation in the program is also designed to better position you for the opportunities that come from these folks. Next slide. So um, we started talking about bonding and I'm just gonna give you a little bit more of an understanding so that um, you kind of have a sense of maybe one, why it's challenging to qualify for it. And then two, really where we can help you qualify. So if you look at the left side of the screen here, what, what is bonding? Bonding is essentially a three-party agreement that guarantees a contract completion. Um, that Those parties exist of you. You're considered the principal. You're the party that's being bonded. Um, and then the bonding company. Um, and then the other party is what's called the obligee. So if you're a prime to one of these agencies, the obligee is the owner. If you're a sub on a contract with one of these agencies, then the prime contractor is considered the obligee. So that's who makes up the parties um, under a bond. Unlike insurance, bonding is not something you can just go out and buy. For the most part, insurance is available to you. Um, it's accessible. You can pretty much get the coverage that you need um, as long as you can afford to pay the premium. But bonding's not like that. Bonding is more like credit. You have to qualify for bonding. Um, and, and there's reasons behind that, but essentially in insurance, um, you know, when you have claims or losses, that's expected by insurance companies. You know, we all can relate to that. If we have a auto and have auto insurance and we have an accident, um, we have a claim, the insurance carrier pays the claim. They don't come back to you and try to collect the money back from you. So insurance companies operate expecting that they're going to have losses. Their goal is to just take in more in premiums than they're paying out in losses and expenses. But bonding is unlike that. It's more like banks and credit where they expect to have no losses. And that means that they have recourse. If they bond you and there is a loss or a claim that because of a, a default or a failure to pay a subcontractor, for example, then bonding companies have recourse. You essentially indemnify them um, when they provide you with a bond and they can come and collect um, from your assets to recover from a claim. So that's why it's something you qualify for, unlike insurance. Next slide. One other point on that prior slide that I'll mention, you don't need to go backwards, is um, bonding is also a very common um, consideration when you're pre-qualifying with a prime. And the reason for that, there's a number of reasons, but one of the reasons for that is that when a prime understands or is aware that you're able to bond a scope of work as a subcontractor for one of their projects, what that means to them is that you've been vetted. They know what's involved in qualifying for bonding. They themselves are bonded. Um, and so that your ability to demonstrate that you can bond a project, even if they don't actually ask you for a bond for that project, just your ability to show you can bond 
is impactful to them. It makes a big difference because again, it means you've been vetted by a third party, a bonding company um, for a certain amount of dollar value of work that that bonding company would essentially guarantee on your behalf. So if a prime is looking at you for a potential subcontract of a million dollars and you're able to demonstrate you can bond a million dollar project, that's going to go far in your ability to pre-qualify um, for that type of opportunity. So even if you haven't been asked for a bond, maybe you haven't had to secure a bond for your firm in the past, getting bonding capacity in place is going to advantage you because it's, again, that demonstration that you've been vetted and that a determination has been made that you have the capacity to perform whatever your scope of work is up to a dollar amount based on the bonding company's assessment. So um, the goals of the program range from helping you obtain your first bond if you've never been bonded before or increase your bonding capacity. So that's the other objective here. If you've been working on projects of you know a million dollars or less in value and now you wanna bid on a project that's 1.5 million or $2 million. This is where the program can be instrumental in helping to bridge the gap between what you currently bond for and what you could bond for with the resources of the program. Uh, contractor development is all about capacity building. That means we're gonna provide you a broad array of technical services. Um, I talked before about the next item on the list, contract-based financing. We call it CFAP. And I'll touch on that again. Um, essentially, if you have been awarded a contract with one of our sponsor agencies, uh, we have CDFI partners, community development financial institutions. They're kind of act like alternatives to banks and their purpose is to provide loans and financing to small businesses, minority businesses that may not be able to secure capital with traditional lenders. So that's really the purpose of CDFIs. And there are several in the Los Angeles region. So we've partnered with two of them um, and they have agreed to provide up to $250,000. And we've had one or two instances where they've agreed to increase that um, even up to $500,000, kind of case by case, of funding uh, that would be available to you if you are awarded a contract with one of our sponsors. Um, and that funds, those funds become available to you um, in concert with you being awarded the contract. So essentially you have a contract specific line of credit available to you to fund your uh, labor expenses, your payroll, your purchase of materials, as long as it's related to that one contract. And we put procedures in place that um, ensure that it can only be used for that one contract. But essentially you have money up front. So instead of having to use your own resources to fund the work associated with the contract you've been awarded, you can utilize these funds. Um, and they're available to you as long as you need them throughout the life of that particular contract. Um, and so I encourage you to um, enroll or reach out to one of our uh, account managers and learn more details about that. It's best when you can um, kind of get ready for that before you're bidding on work um, so that we can kind of get the advanced work up front. This is not like a traditional lender. This is not based on your financials. It's not based on your credit. Essentially, we are collateralizing the contract that you've been awarded. So the contract is a collateral. So you're not going to have the same kind of criteria put in front of you that you're used to seeing if you went to, again, a traditional lender. Um, I mentioned the dedicated account manager that you have. Really, their focus with you is on business development. So we recognize as smaller firms, you know, you don't have a whole team of, of producers or marketing reps who are out there beating the bushes to find contract opportunities for you. Um, and so one of the roles of our account managers, because we're interfacing with the agencies, we're always looking at what's coming up for bid. We're interfacing with the primes. 
So once you're enrolled and assigned to an account manager, if you're an electrical contractor, a drywall contractor, a painting contractor, your account manager is going to be looking always for opportunities for you that align with your particular area of trade. Um, I talked about a little bit about agency collateral support. So when it comes to bonds, one of the ways we help you qualify if necessary is that the agencies will actually put up collateral for you. So we will work with your broker that does bonding for you. And if you don't have one, we'll give you a list of brokers that uh, work with small contractors for you to work with. And we uh, basically help to negotiate your ability to qualify for a bond to bid on or to be awarded work with one of the sponsor agencies. And in some cases that may require us to put collateral up. Um, we have up to $250,000 of collateral that we can put up and you'd be surprised at how far that goes. Um, it, it varies based on where you're at in your business, but $250,000 in collateral has helped secure a bond of $9.6 million for one of our enrolled contractors. Um, so it's, it's leveraged to its optimum value. Um, and it should be noted that this is a significant investment by these sponsors because they're backing this. They're the ones putting themselves at financial risk, so to speak, on your behalf. That just gives you a sense of how committed they are to removing the barriers that may have precluded you from being able to bid and participate on these projects. And one thing I will share with you that we're particularly happy about because it's testament to the true aptitude and attitude of our small contractors. And that is in 25 years that we've been administering programs like this, we've only had two contractors fail to complete their contract. That's out of over a thousand transactions, two. So something we refer to as our loss ratio in the program, it's less than one-tenth of 1%. One so the industry loss ratio for bonding for contractors is about a 20% loss ratio. And this program, our results are less than one-tenth of 1%. One and what that speaks to, as I said, is the real true qualifications, aptitude, and attitude of small and diverse contractors when the barriers are finally removed that allow you to participate in a contract opportunity, you clearly perform. And according to the statistics, you outperform your much larger peers. So just something to be, you know, to take note of is that really you um, have helped to keep a program like this sustained uh, because of your commitment to do good quality work and kind of complete the project no matter what. Um, core to bonding, sometimes contract financing is really about the quality of your financial statements. Um, and so we understand the cost of accounting services or getting something like a CPA prepared financial statement um, can be quite a burden. And so the program has a, a budget that allows us to offset that cost for you and we can pay up to $3,200. This says for prepared financial statements, but it's not limited to that. Um, if there's other accounting you need, for example, if we need you to convert um, cash accounting to accrual accounting, um, we will help cover the cost for having a CPA or an accounting firm work with you to do that. And we bring the accounting firm to you. So we have what we call program partners. Um, so we don't suggest necessarily that you go out and go on the internet and try to find a CPA. If you already have one, we'll work with them. Uh, but we, this is where we bring resources to bear and we bring uh, accounting and CPA firms who are knowledgeable about con uh, contractors, construction, and who work with small businesses. And then last, what you see on this list is, is really information. Um, we know, again, when you're a small contractor, just keeping up with where there might be bid opportunities for you can be a challenge because you're usually running the business. You might be the foreman on a project. You're doing the business development and you're staying up after hours, you know, doing the books. And so, you know, it's something that we're very aware of. And so we generate every week 
uh, a weekly bid opportunity. It's called the Contractor Weekly. And we're going to send you information about bid opportunities um, that are taking place within the region. Um, and in many instances, we will target you to send you specific bid opportunities based on your trade area or scope of work. And then we include in this other types of events, like if a, a prime is having an outreach event, that would be in here. If there was a training program that was for contractors that was coming up, that would be here. So it's really meant to be a weekly look ahead at what's coming up, what's out there that you might wanna bid on or participate in in some way. Next slide. So here is some of the, this went back to contract-based financing. Um, so what's eligible for you to participate? I'm not gonna go through all of this, but really all that's necessary is you have to be a small business. You have to be a small business in the LA region. Um, and that's pretty much the only requirement. This is contract-based financing. So clearly it's tied to you being awarded a contract with one of our sponsors. Um, and, but other than that, that's really only the criteria to qualify. Right now it's for construction contracts, but we have actually uh, looked at and are working on expanding this particular resource to provide this type of support for professional services or service type contracts. Um, so stay tuned for that. And then this is just some more information and kind of about the nitty gritty details. So this is not free money. I do wanna point that out. This is a loan. It's coming from a CDFI, so they have to charge um, an interest rate. There is finance cost, but as you can see, um, this is probably now going to increase. Everybody is aware that interest rates are increasing, and that's going to have an effect on the rates available through this program. But when this was last generated, the rate was six and a quarter. So that might be going up a half a point or even a, a full point because we all have been watching um, the rate increases that come from uh, the feds, and that's going to have an impact. But even at that rate, by comparison to high interest credit cards or other kind of non-conventional loan resources, that's a very low competitive rate. And then there's a 1% origination fee um, based on the value of the loan that you receive. That is the only portion of cost that you yourself bear. Because um, it's no different if you went and negotiated a line of credit with your bank. Um, but all the other costs associated with making this resource available to you um, is funded by the sponsors. Next slide. So I talked about this earlier. Again, this kind of assessment and work plans. You see a few photos here. Uh, Pre-COVID, these kinds of trainings and um, education forums that we convene would have happened in our office. Uh, we're hoping we can get back to that place soon. Although working by Zoom has been uh, actually pretty effective. It's allowed us to accumulate an archive of recorded trainings that you have access to when you're a participant in the program. But generally we like to do these in person in relatively small groups. Um, this one, the picture you see here on the right upper side, that's one of our training academies. And this is where we have a prime uh, in most instances. So these are multi-weeks or six or seven weeks, for example. And some of the content is presented by primes. They'll have their top estimators uh, participating in these classes, sometimes for multiple weeks. And what we've come to see from that is it's not just the content, because you're getting high quality content um, in terms of them bringing their best practices to share with you but you're also getting to engage with really key influential people with the primes. When you're dealing with the top estimator, you know, you're dealing with someone who has influence, who's the one who's looking at subcontractors. And when you're getting to engage with them over multiple weeks, you develop a rapport. They get to know you, you know, beyond a kind of a meet the prime type event where you drop a business card in their bowl. Um, they're interacting with you over time. You're breaking bread together. We always have food at these events. You're networking together. And so we have tracked uh, quite a few circumstances where just by participating in one of these academies, our contractors built a relationship and it led to them being awarded work. Next slide. 
Um, and so I think that's the point that I'm going to transition this. So that's kind of the first half. We broke up the information about the contractor development and bonding program. And at this juncture, I'm going to introduce Jan Davis uh, from Metro. And Jan works in the Diversity and Economic Opportunity Department, DEOD, or it used to be DEOD. Um, at LA Metro. Jan is a champion of small and diverse businesses. Um, she's knowledgeable about what it takes to do business with LA Metro. As I mentioned, LA Metro is one of the sponsors of our program and we appreciate that so much because really we couldn't be here offering these kind of resources uh, without their support. Um, so with that, I'm going to go off screen and have Jan uh, share some insight with you. Hi, Jan. Hi, wow, thank you so much, Ingrid. Um, what a pleasure to share um, this podium with someone as distinguished as Ingrid uh, Merriweather. So again, as she said, I'm Jan Davis. I'm happy to be with you on behalf of Diversity and Economic Opportunity. And as you can see on this slide, our director, Keith Compton, he's not with us today, but he certainly sends his best wishes and his LOs, as well as our senior leadership team for LA Metro. So uh, very quickly, I am going to introduce to you Cynthia Suero Gabler. She is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna have her tell her, have, you, have her tell you a little bit of what she does. Um, and she is standing in proxy today for my good friend and colleague, Olga Mireya Lopez, who you normally would see here, but she is on a very well-deserved and earned vacation. So uh, Cynthia, uh, the mic and camera are yours. Thank you so much, Jan, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you all for having us today. Um, as Jan mentioned, my name is Cynthia Suero Gabler and I serve as the Senior Diversity and Economic Opportunity Representative at Metro. And uh, before we go on to the next slide, uh, just have some, some uh, remarks that I wanted to share that, uh, you know, Metro is doing some very, very exciting projects and programs. Uh, right now, and Metro is extending comprehensive capacity building in technical and bonding assistance to small contractors looking to pursue Metro contracts. And the overall objective of Metro's programs are to support Metro's goals of uh, goals of opportunity, equity, and inclusion to small contractors, including minority women. Uh, veterans and small businesses. Metro seeks to increase the utilization of these businesses and foster the local economic benefit of their growth. We also recognize the barriers which historically impede these small businesses, which includes bonding. Metro's program is administered through the best in the business, which includes Mary Weather and Williams. And they assist contractors with not only bonding, but building their capacity and growth. Next slide, please. And again, thank you for having us. <laughs> we can go to the next slide. All right. So one of the things that we love to do at LA Metro is to show small businesses how to get through the door at LA Metro. So our presentation today, will uh, we will discuss how to do that. And I'm just so honored that Jan will be co-presenting with me. Next slide, please. So one great thing uh, to know is who we are. Who is uh, DEOD and what is our role? So our role is that we are your friends on the inside. We are here to help. We are your advocates for small business and we serve as your system nav navigators in case you get lost. And we understand that that's possible, right? So we are here to help you. DOD's responsibilities is to administer and oversee the small business program initiatives, publicize contract opportunities, provide training and resources, set DBE, SBE, DVBE contract goals, and to monitor compliance. Next slide, please. So Metro certification, why get certified? 
small business certifications similar to are similar to professional certifications. It's a document and a status that may help you to compete in the marketplace. It's very important. So it increases your visibility to prime contractors. Prime contractors are required to meet SBE or DBE utilization goals. As a certified firm, you are critical to the prime contractor's ability to successfully meet these goals. Level, it levels the playing field by providing a fair opportunity to compete federally or non-federally funded uh, transportation contracts for certified small businesses owned and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Next slide, please. Metro currently certifies and accepts two types of certifications. One is the DBE, the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. DBE, the DBE program requires that the applicants or applicants be socially and economically disadvantaged as outlined in CFR 49 uh, part 26. Metro is a member of the California Uni Unified Certification Program, uh, CUCP, and accepts DBEs certified by other member agencies. The second one is the uh, um, Small Business Enterprise, SBE. S the SBE program is unique to Metro and mirrors the DBE program, but is race and gender neutral. And lastly, the Disabled Veterans Business Enterprise, DVBE. Metro accepts DVBE certifications provided by the Department of General Services, DGS. Next slide, please. The requirements for DBE and SBE. Independent business organization organized for profit. Your personal net worth must be less than $1.32 million. Uh, annual gross receipts of five year average must be less than $26.29 million. The qualifying individual is in control of management and daily business operations. And lastly, 51% of ownership by one or more economic, economically disadvantaged individuals. Next slide, please. An additional requirement for DBE. The DBEs must also be socially disadvantaged. And socially and economically disadvantaged individual means that any individual who is a citizen of the United States for lawfully and admitted, or I'm sorry, or lawfully admitted permanent resident who is a member of at least one of the following groups, African-American, Hispanics, Native Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, and subcontinent Asian Americans and women. Next slide, please. B2G online certification application. So Metro is the only California Unified Certification Program, CUCP member agency that has implemented an online certification and management system. This application has been designed to streamline the process for applicants and eliminate the need for hard copy submissions. Online certification key features, user-friendly platform, a tracking tool to check on the status of your application, free webinar system trainings to walk you through the form and process, and 24 hour technical support. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, certification resources, uh, you can go online. Um, online applications may be accessed at metro.go b2g 
www.thepeacekeepers.com. And for uh, more information, you can email uh, our certification unit, which is at certificationunit at metro.net. The phone number is 213-922-2600, or you can go to uh, metro.net forward slash connect. And now I will pass this on to my friend, Jan Davis. All right, good job, Cynthia. The mouthful there, but you got through it. All right, so next slide, please. I wanna tell you a little bit about Metro's small business program initiatives. So um, there are three that I want to lay out for you specifically. That's the small business prime, the set aside, the medium-sized business, which now has two program enhancements, and our contracting outreach and mentoring plan, our comp plan, which is one of my favorites. Okay, so next slide, please. So uh, Metro Small Business Program has been cited as best practice by the Millican Institute and uh, Bruce Katz of the Brookings Institute. So this is a groundbreaking program that will allow prime, I'm sorry, will allow small businesses to compete as prime contractors. So uh, let's talk about what that looks like a little bit. So small businesses compete only against other small businesses in competitively negotiated RFPs. And uh, right now the threshold is, it's, it has been lifted. We'll talk about it a little bit further down, but at this point it was from 3 million to 5 million on both federal and non-federally funded contracts. Uh, they only compete against other small businesses. And so we've kind of flipped the business model, as you can see. So you as a small business can now con or you know, subcontract a larger firm to do 70% of the work while you perform 30% of the commercially useful function. So this is really exciting to us. We've had a great impact since its launch. 188 million. This number is getting ready to change. We just flipped over into our um, new fiscal year. So we're going to be updating this information. And uh, next slide, please. Also for our certification, uh, Cynthia mentioned that we were the only agency that has an online uh, certification program. But actually, we are we were the first. Now we're not the only because other agencies have followed suit. So we're happy about that. So let's talk a little bit about our medium-sized enterprise program. So uh, th this, this medium-sized program is a new set aside that was designed to bridge the gap between small business and large business concern. Um, our former CEO, Phil Washington, was concerned about um, our small businesses who you know, we integrated into our small business program and they were succeeding. And so they were growing out of the small business program and they weren't able to compete any longer. So he worked with our DEOD small business unit led by Tasha Smith and her team. And they came up with this medium-sized uh, business enterprise program. So um, our new CEO, Stephanie Wiggins is 100% behind this and we have some new program enhancements for uh, small for medium-sized businesses, uh, one and two. And I hope those slides are in there, but let's talk about this for just a little bit. Medium-sized firms are described as firms that are not a subsidiary of another firm with three-year average of 25 million to 250 million maximum. And this is gross annual receipts and also um, a maximum of 250 employees. And all of this is gonna be validated by Metro. So how it works is this. Metro will invite firms of any size to bid and propose under MSC. If we get two firms that, um, that are responsive MSC bidders, then it will trigger a set aside and it will go only to MSC firms. If we get less than two, then it goes back out and it opens up to all firms, whether they are MSZ, um, you know, they fit the MSZ description or not. Next slide, please. So these are the new program enhancements that I was trying to tell you about earlier with our MSZ programs. So I want you to, and I keep, if you see me keep moving my hand, it's because I'm thinking that I am, <laughs> 
controlling the slides that I'm not. It's such a habit. So sorry if that's a little distracting for you. But so anyway, uh, a little bit about our MSD uh, two program. So uh, this is this is a lot of information. I know this is going to be made available to you. I know we have a little bit of time. I'm not going to go through this slide. But if you have questions, you know you can contact us. As Cynthia said, we're your friends on the inside. Study it a little bit. If you have questions about it, give us a call and or, or send us an email and we'll put you in touch with our small business unit to talk about this a little bit. But um, you know, it's a lot of information on here and I don't wanna have to go through all of this with you bit by bit because we don't have a lot of time. So just take a look at it. If you have questions about it, please give us a call, okay? So next slide, please. Um, here, I can tell you that there are two ways to meet the MSZ definition. So for MSZ one, there are two ways. So a firm must not be a subsidiary of another firm. And, and it has, um, gross annual receipts averaged over three years or a number of employees that do not exceed one and a half times the small business standard size set forth in 13 CFR part 121. So um, regardless of the above uh, definition, the second way you can meet the MSC criteria is that uh, you're a certified Metro SBE firm. And um, a certified DBE firm by the Cal or a, a certified DBE form by the uh, California Unified Certification Program, or of course by the Department of General Services if you're a DBE. So there are two ways that you can meet the medium size. So firms deemed no longer eligible under the certification program must meet the definition of MSZ1. Okay, so if you have grown out of the SBE you know, definition or the DBE or the DVBE, well, you can still compete under MSZ1 under that particular threshold. So for MSZ2, this is also, they kind of, you know, they, they're the same, but then they're, they differ in a little bit of way. And I'm going to show you that. It says a firm that is not a subsidiary of another firm that has gross annual receipts of at least 26 million and does not exceed two times, okay? So the other one was one and a half times. So this is two times the small business standard in dollars as set forth in 13 CFR part 121 and averaged over three years, the number of employees uh, in its applicable North American industry classification system. Next slide, please. <laughs> So this is one of my favorite ones. This is a contracting um, outreach and mentoring plan, what we call COMP. So any RFP or IFB uh, that is over 25 million, any bidder is required to submit a plan that will objectively grow the capacity of DBEs, SBEs, and DBEs. BE firm. So that's the objective, okay, to measurably grow. Sorry, I said that wrong. So bidders must host outreach events for DBEs, SB, SBEs, and DVBEs prior to submittal. They must provide innovative, measurable mentoring plans and evaluation criteria. They must um, send us a detailed technical assistance strategy. Like, how are they going to do this? Not just walk the walk, but talk the talk. This is how we're going to come alongside our SBEs. This is how we're going to grow their in capacity. And um, they almost they uh, also must identify mentor and protégés as required in the solicitation itself. And they must specify contract subcontracting approach for uh, review and approval. So like I said, they have to tell us exactly how they're going to come alongside these SBEs, DBEs, and DVBE firms to grow them. Okay, next slide, please. So networking and events and workshops. So you heard uh, Ingrid talk a lot about uh, the different resources that we want to make available to you. And, and when I say we, I'm just talking about agencies like Metro, as well as uh, agencies such as Meriwether and Williams 
that have these incredible training programs. So uh, we have some of our own, and I don't know if uh, you guys are familiar with any of these workshops, but the first one I wanna tell you about is our Evergreen Workshop, okay? And uh, so this one is gonna go down no matter what, right? Always the second Tuesday of every month, except for August, because we observe August as a month where we don't meet, just like our board. So we have our How to Do Business with Metro Workshop every two, second Tuesday of the month. And uh, it provides attendees with that insight scoop and that look into contracting opportunities. We're going to tell you more about certification in detail. We're going to talk about um, the contractor bonding program. We usually have Rick Casillas, who's our uh, account manager, who's with us uh, during these programs. And then we also have a prime on hand that's going to tell you about their contracting opportunities any, um, as well. And so these are some primes that work directly with Metro. And then there are other primes that don't necessarily have a contract with Metro, but we invite them in because it's all about helping you succeed um, in contracting opportunities. And also we want to tell you about our uh, Transportation Business Advisory Council, TBAC, and that happens the first Thursday of every month. Metro, um, uh, it works in conjunction with this particular board on all uh, DEOD and Metro matters concerning small businesses and features a monthly speaker series, current and future contracting opportunities, legislations, updates, and more. And again, um, in observance with our board, there are no meetings in August. Actually, Jen, we are meeting this August. You are, okay, <laughs> <Yes>. perfect. <laughs> okay, great, that's good to know. Um, so first, first Thursday in August, Cynthia? Yes, first Thursday in August at 9.30 a.m. Okay, great. All right. So next slide, please. Okay, so this is very important. Try to get through this. Um, this is our vendor portal, metro.net forward slash connect. So if you go ahead and just click through, I think it's got some little action things. Oh, okay, well, go back. Never mind. It doesn't have those little action things on there. So anyway, um, here are some resources that are gonna be very important for you. So first of all, I wanna tell you about our solicitations page. So if you go up to that gray bar and you see solicitations, that is where all of our contracting opportunities are listed. That's very important for you to check that. When you go in and you click, you can scroll through, see what contracting opportunities are coming, uh, see what's on the street right now, It'll give you information like um, the uh, contract administrator who's gonna be very important um, to, for you to receive information from. You can call that contract administrator and get what we call a plan holders list. And when you get that plan holders list, what you wanna do is you want to be aggressive, go in, call that prime contractor and say, hey, I see that you are going to be bidding or that you're interested in bidding on, you know, the I-105 for Metro. Listen, I am a cement layer or I am a pavement person or, a, you know, whatever it is that you do, let them know, hey, I want to work with you. Let me send you my um, statement of qualifications. Uh, is there an outreach event that I can come, that I can learn more about what you do? Research that prime contractor, see what their base operations is, and see how you can fit in that as a small business. Okay, and then we have our online toolkit for our small businesses. It's kind of a walkthrough of all of our programs. It's got contact information in there, our senior leadership team, our information, so many wonderful things that can happen. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden then also our certification uh, page is in there. So you can click that link and go in and begin your certification process. Thank you. Next slide. So if you want to obtain information regarding Metro Connect events, we'd like for you, again, to go to that vendor portal at metro.net forward slash connect, 
look for the calendar of events on the events and news tab. And then you can go into that space and you can find out all of the events that Metro has coming up. We also post uh, information from our sister agencies as well as prime contractors. And we also post information from Meriwether and Williams about the, all the marvelous uh, training programs that they have. So um, that's all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for allowing us to share this platform with you. And I am now turning it back over. Am I giving it back to you, Ingrid? Yes, you are. Right. Just all minute. yours, madam. All right. Thank you, Jan. Appreciate that. You guys are always so deep in the information you provide, which is so helpful to folks because it is complicated. Oh, and it there is. are lots of steps to it. And I hope all of you recognize the depth of knowledge from Jan and Cynthia. Um, and so you can sense that if you need help navigating the process, you've got two key individuals um, who are there who can walk you through a lot of what you saw in detail. Um, so thank you again, Jan and Cynthia. It's always great to see you guys. Yes, you too. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. So we're monitoring our time a little bit and see that we're running a little bit over. So we're going to make a quick change in the program uh, because we wanna make sure that you get uh, the most optimum uh, value of information. And when it comes to the contractor development and bonding program, that you always have access to because all you have to do is reach out to us. Um, you'll see our contact information at the end here or put your name in the, in the chat or the Q&A if you would like to have a rep contact you and we can give you a full-on overview of the program. And if you enroll and you're assigned account manager, then this is all gonna be personalized to you anyway. So we decided we're gonna forego the latter half of the contractor development and bonding program presentation um, and take advantage of the fact that we have representatives here um, from LA County, because we think it's important for you to hear really from the sponsors directly on kind of how to nav navigate their process and how to do business with them. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Mildred, who's gonna introduce um, our friends here from LA County. And thank you all. I'm actually gonna be signing off now, but so glad you were here and hope that you found the information worthy of your time. Thank you, Ingrid. Yes, how um, Ingrid mentioned, in the interest of time, we'll be jumping to our LA County presentation. And I am honored to introduce Guyane Zakarian. She is Chief of Staff, or excuse me, Chief of Administrative Operations at Public Works. She currently oversees Public Works service contracts, contract monitoring, compliance of the Living Wage Program for Proposition A, and cafeteria services contracts. Guyane is a strong supporter of providing business opportunities to the local community and awarding contracts to local small businesses. Please welcome Guyane Zakarian. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for a great introduction. Um, as she mentioned my name, I'm the Chief Administrative Operation for Public Works, and it's an honor for me to join you here today. Uh, Los Angeles County Public Works is one of the largest public works agencies in the nation with a workforce of 4,000 employees and an annual budget of $3.7 billion. In fiscal year 2021, Public Works awarded over $1 billion worth of contracts that helped create over 12,000 jobs. We've been working with our county departments and partners to help promote equity in county contracting. The Contractor Development and Bonding Assistance Program is one of the great efforts in removing all the barriers in county contracting so small businesses like yours can successfully compete for construction projects. At this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. Robert Murphy from my team who will be present on how to begin the process to going to doing business with public works. Robert oversees the business outreach program in the business relations and contracts division, which provide business friendly contracting opportunity, as well as a broad range of other programs designed to promote local economy growth and prosperity. We would we would look forward to partnering with you and thank you so much for allowing this time for me to speak to you. Robert, please go ahead. 
Thank you so much, Guyanne. Thank you, everybody here for being with us. I know that we're running a little short on time, so I'm going to give you a lot of good information, but I'm going to rush through it. But you're going to have the links and the information on the slides. So if you need more information or more details later, you can always contact us. Uh, just very quickly. Okay, so we're just uh, we're having a little issue with the slides right now, but um, I'm just going to tell you very quickly about pub what Public Works is. Uh, you know, we do so much that a lot of times people don't realize how much it really is, and we're touching every piece of a modern civilization, from the roads uh, to the bridges to uh, flood control, sewer control, groundwater, uh, sustainability, and quality. Um, a vertical construction, horizontal construction. We do, we do everything that makes the quality of life in Los Angeles County good when we're doing our job well and things are working. So um, hopefully you don't know anything about us when you go about your day-to-day -day life. But if you're a contractor and you're looking to do work, what's great about Public Works is we have so many services that we offer. We need a lot of different types of contracting help. And so, so I'm going to, I'm going to quickly walk through the, the three steps of doing uh, business with LA County. And the first one is becoming a vendor with Los Angeles County. Can you, I'm sorry, can you guys tell me what slide you see right now? Hi, Robert. We're seeing the presentation slide along with uh, the following few slides. Okay, I, I'm going to take over control of the screen because the person here is having some issues with you, it. You have to go into like presentation mode because right now it's not. Just give me one second, I'm sorry. Share screen. Okay, so you should be very familiar with this screen, right? You're just looking at it for the last five minutes. You can see it, Robert. Thank you so much. Okay, sure. And this is just a little bit about public works. I just kind of talked about that. And you know, beyond all the things that we do, we also are very much committed to Los Angeles County's overall commitment to economic growth and development of the local communities. And from, from the highest level, from the, the businesses that need help, all the way down to the micro level, to the, to the, the an individual that needs uh, more help than the next where, where we and we, 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 we have programs that are set up to give that individual the help that they need the specific to that person to get them to where they need to be. And so I'm not going to go over here the system stats here, but it, really we have we're, con we are continuing to always make the programs that are already established better and always looking for new ways to and new programs to, to to bring more people that need help into these to cap, captured in these in these programs. So I'm not going to go over the, the different types of programs that we have. We have quite a few, and there's a lot on the horizon too. So we're just going to keep growing and growing. Um, so step one, you have to be an LA County vendor. That's done through ISD. That's one of our sister departments, and the links there. It's pretty easy to use, and. You, if you have trouble, there's a, a hotline that you can contact or uh, a, a service line through that website. That's ISD. I believe um, well, it says we'd actually, uh, that's actually called the Department of uh, Economic Opportunity now. And I'm not sure if they have their logo ready, 
but it used to be called uh, Workforce Development, Aging, and Community Services. But the services are the same. So she's going to talk about uh, Jessica's great, and she's going to talk about uh, the certification or preference programs that we have available. And step three, how to do business with Public Works. So this is uh, my favorite part because I work for Public Works and we work very closely with the contracting, we work in a contracting division with these vertical construction projects. Uh, but we have the all type, like I said, all types of different types of contracts that we need help with. So you're gonna wanna go to um, that website. It's called uh, Do Business with Public Works. And you can Google that, or uh, you can go to our, our main website, and, and you can and, and go to there, and it'll have all the opportunities that are open. And you can search by the type of business that you're in. If you're not in vertical construction or not in construction at all, you're doing service contracts, then you can narrow your, your search down to service contracts. Uh, if you are looking to sell supplies, then you can do it by procurement. So there's a filtering system on there to help you search for the different opportunities. And we are always making changes to that website to improve it. So uh, if you find a trouble using it, then certainly let us know and, and we'll look into making it better for you. Uh, a little bit about purchasing. With the procurement, we have, like I said, so many different services that we need. Uh, really, if you're selling uh, supplies, you want to you make sure, or, or any type of procurement, um, from a pencil to uh, steel, uh, tons of steel for uh, of uh, hospitals that we're building, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're aware of how the procurement process works and uh, get and become a vendor and figure out where your, what your serve or what type of uh, product that you supply or service you, you offer and how that fits into our solicitation process. Again, I can't go into that. We don't, we don't have time to do that, but that is something that you're definitely gonna wanna do. And you can see just that this is a tiny, this is a tiny sample of the different, uh, the many different types of materials that we need. I'm wearing one of them right now, a vest. We're on site at a construction uh, site right now. And these are some of the types of things that we need uh, beyond everything that you see behind me in this office. And then uh, if you could see out this window, you'd see a lot of other types of things. And this is just on a construction site. So there is, uh, there's the website, um, and that is, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to filter it. You can look through all of the opportunities if you want to. Um, there's another way to filter it by the types of projects, or you can do it by, I, I would do it by all if I was you. You can also do uh, by the status. Uh, you, of course, you want to know what the open ones are, but maybe you're interested in seeing what's coming up. That's exactly why we're here to tell you a little bit about the ones that are upcoming. Or you know, why would you want to know about the closed ones? Well, that will give you a really good sense of what we've awarded in the past. And if we needed that service in the past, then we're probably going to need it in the future also, or potentially we could need it in the future. So it doesn't hurt to do your research and see if something was awarded in the past that would is a service or, or product that you would be able to provide. It's all in our database. There's a lot going on there. And again, if you need help with that, contact us and we can walk you through it. And when you do find something that is looks good to you, 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 you have this uh, list of projects on the right-hand side here. You find something, you click on it, and it's going to lead you to the project summary page. And I'm not, I, there's a lot of important, I, I'm going to say every area on here is very important. It, it, it is, a, seems like a lot of information and a lot of hard work to get to do it, but there's also, a, if you, if you are able, if you are willing to put the work in up front, then there's, a, there's, a, you have that opportunity to, to work for LA County or potentially on one of our projects. And the people are out there doing it right now. They've been doing it for years, so there's no reason why you or your business can't do it. And if you do run into a problem, that's why we're here. It's to help you get over that hurdle. So everything here is important, but due dates, uh, somebody else uh, from Metro had mentioned the contact person. It's the same kind of thing. You want to make sure that you have, you're, you're following the process. You know the process and you're following it. You don't want to be disqualified just because you didn't do the formatting right or follow the rules. So you find a project you like, and I, I encourage you to become a plan holder or register for the, pro for the project. And you're going to do that by 
don't know if you go back here and you, you can click on um, uh, request if you, on the document section, it's, they're always a little bit different, but if anything you click on there, it's going to lead to this page and it's going to ask you to sign in or say no thanks. Uh, either sign in if you've already registered or create an account. You don't want to say no thanks because if you do that, then you will not be listed as a plan holder. Over here, you can see the prime plan holders and the sub plan holders. And so, somebody else earlier from Metro had been talking about, um, you know, maybe you're not ready to be a prime contractor, or maybe you, you want to be a sub. And this is a really good opportunity to see who else has is potentially a plan holder and interested. But you can also see which prime contractors are interested in this project. And you can start, just like, um, our colleagues from Metro said, the counterparts from Metro said, you can start actively marketing your business. You don't, don't wait for them to come to you, but you can get out there. And I don't mean harass them or bug them, but you know, go out there and show them that you can do a high quality job for a, a, a reasonable price. And these are just some of the we talk a lot about subcontractors. We, we like we we are big on helping all businesses right now, of course. And but we do have a, a small businesses. Hi. Yeah. So so I'm I'm going to skip this part. You can look at those uh, different uh, marketing strategies and things that we uh, tips that we would give you. But if anything's confusing here, then definitely contact us and we'll get back to you. Uh, this is us right now. We're actually right now we're at a project. We're at a billion dollar contract uh, construction project. It's just getting going. It's the Harbor UCLA and it is in supervisorial district two, just like the other projects we're going to be talking about. And uh, this project right now, it's 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 just starting to get going and it's going to be a long term project. So the first project to talk about is definitely this one. And um, the prime contractor, uh, Hansel Phelps, already has a system in place it, so that you as an individual or a business can go to these links and show that you're interested as an individual worker, or maybe um, you're, just, you're interested in working as a, a small business. And again, I won't go over those links too much, but the, the, the survey to kind of see where you fit in and uh, how they could potentially help you. Can, you can help them meet their goals and you can help them meet their goals. And, and from there, there's a, you click on this page when, you're, when you say, okay, I, this, this project is definitely for me. I'd love to be a part of this, this long uh, project, making things great at, at Harbor UCLA. And you have a, a little system there. Uh, there's a, they have a website dedicated to this and you just click on there and go through it and sh and sh and it, you're basically bidding on the opportunity to be a subcontractor on this project and if you have any issues, problems with that or some or they don't reach out to you then by all means please uh, give me a call and uh, i'll make sure that somebody get back gets back to you project is just getting started we're here right now actually at the site uh, we're in a little, we're in a little, we're in one of the work trailers for public works and everybody's mobilizing and it's going to be a really fantastic, a really fantastic opportunity for this entire community because we're going to make sure it is. And it, there's no reason why you, you can't be part of that. So here are some other so upcoming con, uh, projects that are coming up in, S, in Supervisorial District 2. And there's a variety of them. Um, a lot of these are going to be uh, actually there's different ones here. So you can see there's some road projects. You can see there's some transportation projects, um, but you can also see we, we have um, some stormwater or, or um, uh, some stormwater uh, maintenance projects. Um, and we'll be having quite a bit of those infrastructure or horizontal infrastructure projects coming up in the future. Um, and, and so if anything, I would say don't, don't, uh, don't uh, rely too much on that upcoming section of the webs of that, because that can change every day and it's not fully complete. It's just really what the, we were putting in there and that's what we know at that moment. But you're going to want to look at this, if not every day, 
then you can sign up to our Do Business with Public Works web, uh, website newsletter. And if you don't look at anything else in that newsletter, I hope you do because we put a lot of work into it and we try to make it nice and helpful for the businesses. But if you don't look at anything else, at the very least, you'll be notified when the new opportunities or solicitations are released. And so you'll never, you're, you'll never miss, you'll never miss a, a new opportunity that comes out for public works. Um, especially if you're in the construction industry or, or you're looking at the service side, these are public work specific projects that you could have an opportunity to work on by doing just what I told you, click on it, you know, plan holder, and then, and just uh, start marketing yourself. Um, and it, it's as simple as just putting your email address here. We don't, we send you one email a week. It has a lot of great information and uh, it's a, it's a direct connect, it's a connect, it's a direct connection to the, the, the people at public works that are devoted to helping individuals and small businesses be successful in this community, supervisorial district two and Los Angeles County in general. And so um, I um, I don't I'm not I would typically kind of go through each one of these. I'm not sure how much time we have. I don't think we have a lot of time left, so I'm probably not going to do that. But you could easily go into the to our website and go on the upcoming projects and. Like I can't promise they're all going to be there because it does change, but most of these projects will probably be there and you'll be able to get a good sense of, uh, of what's out there or potentially coming up. But again, really pay attention to the opening ones and make sure that you stay on top of it. I don't expect you to do it every day. Sign up for our newsletter. Give us a call. Um, Amy Lee is the is also the, the co-unit head here. She runs a lot of the programs. She actually helps Meriwether and Williams um, from the public work side with the contractor development and bonding assistance program. So it's a very exciting new program and we're very happy to do whatever we can to help that be a success uh, it, because education is one of the things that we love to do and, and the bonding is, is such a huge hurdle for a lot of people. And so they're providing a, a really important service. There's our contact information there um it's probably the easiest to do it through the email but feel feel free to call also we will we'll get back to you and with that i think i will i went through a lot there uh but like i said feel free to uh, reach out to us and we will have somebody work with you one-on-one -on -one or um we'll, we'll give you whatever whatever we, you need to get you to the next step. So it, it, it just depends on the individual in the business. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you again and for, uh, for giving us a quick overview of doing business with Los Angeles County Public Works. Again, we'll be providing the slides uh, to attendees for you all to study uh, their information. Amy Lee's and Robert Murphy's information will be provided there. In case you have any questions, you can um, give them a call or email them. Now in just a second, I will share my screen and welcome or present um, our next uh, panelist. Her name is Jessica Morales. She oversees the concierge and certification program, which is, assists entrepreneurs with startup services and becoming contract ready to do business with the County of uh, Los Angeles. Please welcome Jessica Morales. It seems like technical issues are kind of going around. Okay, here we go. Jessica Morales for small um, Los Angeles County Department of Economic Opportunity, and she'll be discussing small business certifications. Hi, Jessica, are you online? Okay, well, it seems Jessica was online a few minutes ago, um, but we'll be providing her slides as well um, in a thank you email to all attendees. And um, there you'll be able to study in, a, in more depth the, uh, the process for the LA County Department of Economic Opportunity Small Business Certifications. So 
Um, with that being said, we'll go on and um, to closing remarks. Uh, we've come to the end of our presentation and now please welcome or yes, please welcome Robert Lowry. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I just wanna uh, thank everyone for attending today's event and special thank you to our speakers from Metro and from the county. There's a lot of great information that was shared and with Ingrid's presentation, you know, it was a lot. Uh, so, you know, we are here to help you uh, afterwards. Uh, make sure you do reach out to us through uh, emails and we will take it from there and, and help you guys out. Uh, so we're going to now open up for any questions uh, for the next couple of minutes before we end the program. Hi, Mildred. I just wanted to say real quick, um, Jessica was having issues and she apologizes. That's all right, no worries. We have a presentation and uh, hopefully for the next uh, outreach workshop, we'll be, you know, we'll have her on the panel and uh, to speak on the presentation or the certifications, but um, thank you again. Okay, so the floor just, is, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, I was just going to say uh, the floor is open for any questions uh, from contractors. We have a few panelists still online. Um, and if you have any questions, you can uh, direct them to uh, the account manager and or just raise your hand and we'll be able to um, allow you to speak on the um, on the presentation. So while we are waiting for that, any questions, comments, I just want to do a PSA that we are preparing for our next uh, bidding and estimating academy uh, that will be sponsored by the County of LA. Uh, so stay tuned if you're interested in one to get into our academy, uh, reach out to us through the MWIS, uh, MWIS info email uh, so you can get enrolled into our program so we can get you enrolled into our next academy that's going to be starting up in, a, in about a month or so so it's gonna be a lot of great uh, information that will be given there training networking uh, getting to know the county of LA uh, so there's great opportunities that will be given there so I just want to give that plug Okay, I see some questions there uh, from a Miss uh, C. Lamont Gibson. Um, who would who would one contact to offer support on IT needs of your group? Ah, uh, that is now for us. Like I said, you can get enrolled into our program, and that your dedicated account manager can help you with IT. We know that. IT is now becoming you know, more and more popular with projects and bonding is being requested. So I recommend that you uh, get enrolled to our program and we can guide you to the different sponsors and also you know, with our other resources with that. Uh, there's a question from Alana Washington. What is the amount of time to acquire a MBE WBE certification. I am going to turn it over to maybe if Jan is still here or someone uh, that can answer that question properly. Um, I can answer that question. Okay, okay. EWBE certification is not um, really directly with county or metro. So if you do go through the MBE, um, WBE through the city of LA, typically it's about 90 days. Okay, all right, thank you, Michelle. Hi, Robert, thank you so much for moderating yeah. the Q&A. Uh, we're actually out of time and thank you all for joining us and okay. navigating LA County and Metro contracting opportunities with Holly J. Mitchell. Again, we will be um, providing the presentation slides for your um, careful study. And if you have any questions, our information will be provided as well. Thank you again all for joining. Um, and we'll be uh, having another Navigating Opportunities um, Outreach Workshop on August 25th 
We'll be sending out information uh, for that in the thank you email as well. Thank you again. Have a wonderful evening.